Welcome to Frontline's video in our second master series. I do believe this is the 55th video in our second master series. And the third, uh, fourth video on basic processors and the third video on equalization. So now I really hope that you took the last video and started thinking about that, investigating into that so you can take those things into consideration when working with equalization. The next thing we want to talk about is the equal loudness contour. We have a couple things we want to talk about here. There's a few videos on my channel about the equal loudness contour. And in my first master series, there's a whole section on equalization. I suggest you go back and watch that. But we're going to go through it again anyway a little bit here. Because the equal loudness contour is one of the biggest things that are going to affect your equalization and doing a good equalization. Now... The first thing you want to come to the understanding of is whenever you're dealing with this, we have talked about mixing levels. So I normally mix it about 85 dB. So we want to go on this curve that's reading about on the 80 dB SPL mark and go off of that curve. Now, once you understand that, that you have, it's a pretty simple concept that it's between 500 hertz and about 1,000 hertz here is that it's flat line. Now, it has to get boosted up here for the ear to hear these, this sounds in this frequency area as being the same level as this. And over here, they have to be boosted way up. That way, your ear perceives these levels or these, this frequency domain as the same level as this. Here, it has to be subtracted, and the bass end has to be really boosted up along those lines. It goes from about 500 hertz, and then just starts slowly going way up, and it goes up a lot. And then your ear perceives these levels as the same level as these. So this is a great thing because it can really help you a lot. And, you know, to keep that in mind. Now, the next thing we want to talk about is I wanted to explain something that's very pertinent. Is that whatever graphic equalizer you, or parametric equalizer you're using and whichever dynamic equalizer you're using set up percentages. This one right here is set up to follow the equal loudness contour as the difference between this and this and this and this whatever between 500 and 1000K and down in the low end is set up to follow this contour as close as possible. And then when I get to, I go to percentages of that, like let's say this one is here setting up at 24 dB boost. In the base end, that seems like ridiculous, huh? But it's not. So I'd go like 80% of that. I'd go to 80% of all those different nodes because there's basically one, two, three, four different areas that are boosting and subtracting along the contour. This other node I have on here to try to contain this because it was boosting it up too much here. So I went and found 80% of those, 60% of those, 40% of those, and 20% of those. That way that I have a percentage of the amount of the equal loudness contour to start out from. Because I might go in here and on this certain out thing, I've got 40% of the equal loudness contour. But then I actually had to boost this one up a little bit. I had to subtract this one a little bit. I had to boost this one a little bit or subtract that one. I had to, to bring this down a little more or bring it up a little closer to get it just right. But those are percentages to start out with which are going to help you immensely in becoming that next level master audio engineer. So that's a pretty simple concept and you setting up your parametric EQ like that so you have those static EQs to work from with those percentages and your dynamic EQ is set up with presets doing the same thing is going to help you immensely. On your dynamic EQ, you can actually set this one up to be pushing and compressing down a little bit where you can have this one over here pushing up a little bit and expanding a little bit. Switch the direction of it to up. Does that make sense? Which gives you a whole new level of adding some life to your production. Because sometimes life just isn't static, just like equalization work. So, that's the first thing we talk, I want to talk about besides the equal audience contour. The next thing we want to talk about is application. Now, we talked about in the last video that we talked about different situations. We talked about natural situations. We talked about semi-natural situations, like we were talking about the guitar player running through his certain type of guitar, through an effects pedal, through a certain tank cabinet, and da-da-da-da-da. And we talked about samples, which are unknown. You can have 
a sample that's got natural elements, that has synthesizer elements, that has the guitar player, you know, somewhere in the middle of that elements, all three of them being combined into one sample that without being able to equalize them separately means you have to be real careful, you know, equalizing that sample and taking that into consideration and being delicate and very purposeful in your direction and your targeting when you start to fuss with that. And we have the 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 we have things like you know synthesizers which have if you watch my videos on this channel about synthesizers it can have multiple aspects and it can also have samples integrated into them also by the time you get done with a synth patch that you're working on for some certain production so they're very complicated and you might need to con you know equalize each separate app this part of that synthesizer thing because sometimes i'll make synth things that i've got three or four different synthesizers to get together to create this cool sound to make this thing happen and i might have to equalize them all differently as i mix them trying to get it to come out right so i don't end up with a mess so whenever we're talking about the equal loudness contour in these situations the biggest thing to keep in mind to help take you to that next level as that next level master audio engineer is natural sounds like we talked about, a vocalist, a cello, a clean acoustic guitar, you know, an oboe or a whatever that you've dry mic'd and things like that. You can really apply the equal loudness contour well and not have to fuss with it a lot because you're really starting to push up areas that and boost and subtract in areas that help your ear to hear all the nuances and aspects of that natural instrument at equal levels and clearly so that it comes out sounding lush and full and all aspects of the instrument come out sounding great you know unless you have a part of it that doesn't which you have to cut out well that's obvious but we'll talk about that in the next coming videos when we talk about equalization stages which are very important the next thing we come to is we come to like that quote unquote second situation like that guitarist. He's got a guitar with certain pickups that he's using different certain pickups on his situation. He's running through an effects pedal, some certain type of amplifier with a certain type of cabinet that if he's a decent guitarist and he spent any time trying to get it sounding the way he wants to it, be guaranteed the equalization had something to do with how it came out sounding. I mean, all, all kinds of different things. Even the pickup, the pickup he decided to use while he's playing it is has different frequency response characteristics just in itself, and the strings also. So there's multitudes of different things happening there that are causing it to sound the way it does. So you throw an equal oddness contour on it might not work, and you come to yourself trying to find you know, various degrees of the equal loudness contour that sound like they're helping it. And sometimes you have kind of cut off aspects. It's like I've got it set up here and on this guitar, it sounds great, but it sounds muddy. So I cut out the bass end. You know, it's like, that sounds pretty good, but now it sounds like it could add a little bit of bass. So I start fussing with that, adding a little bit less. And sometimes it's not. Sometimes it sounds really good, but I had to go cut this here and there and there. And just that little boost, like where the equal loudness contour dictates, He's just kind of pushed his sound over the edge. Yeah, that helped because right there between 1 and 2K, it just was like, you know, I couldn't hear it. And now that I'm starting to bring those harmonics up in that frequency area, now it's sounding nice. It's sounding really good. That situation can be very difficult. So whenever you're dealing with that situation, take extreme care and think about that situation in the when you're dealing with it as far as equal loudness contour that we are just dealing with areas that the equal loudness contour dictates to attenuate and boost and so finding various degrees of that and then working off of that like i said you come in here and it's like well you know no that's not sounding good and that's not sounding good and that's not helping but the boost and low end sounds good in that much or i start working with it at that point because no that's still too much i'm bringing that down some you know but in that area that the equal loudness contour dictates because i'm working there first you know or when i'm working with my equal loudness contour work it can be kind of difficult in that situation. So just take care to take that into consideration. The next situation is we're talking about samples. Samples are unknown territory sometimes, and you really have to be careful with them because they can have all different aspects of different situations like we talked about in the last video and in this video that 
you're mixing a mixed down file that you have to be real careful. So when you start putting your equal oddness contour and various degrees on there, that you can have the same problem as the second situation we talked about with the guitarist, and you just have to start thinking about what's involved there. What can that be before you start trying to throw stuff on there and end up having a mess? I get people, I've, you know, and especially in situations like that, the guy shows up and he's got his equalizer set up like this and that over here and this one over here. And he's like, you know, I don't know exactly what happened. It just never sounds good. Well, what do I got now? <laughs> you know, it's like, well, I'm not trying to pick on him, but, you know, he really doesn't understand what he's dealing with. He hadn't thought about it and he hasn't thought about things we've talked about so far. And so he's just making a mess and where he just eventually gets frustrated and he can't understand why his equalization sounds like crap now the next situation we come to is synthesizers synthesizers like i said can contain all those different aspects the natural aspect the aspect like the guitarist the aspect of the samples unknown samples we don't even know what the heck happened to them or where they came from or what's going on in them what they did to them and we have different aspects of synthesizers wave tables synthesize mod i mean all kinds of different synthesis that all are coming together to create this sound where sometimes if you don't equalize each one of those sounds separately before you mix them together it's like i've got three different synthesizers and i've equalized each one of them doing a wavetable synthesis a sample synthesis and da 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 and i've equalized them all you know the done my equal oddness contour work on each one of them before i mixed them together sometimes you may or may not have that ability to do that depending on what you're doing but be real careful of the synthesizers and equal oddness contour because if I go into this vocal and I go, I got 60% of the equal oddness contour in there and oh my God, it sounds just thick, rich, lush and awesome, dude. And I had to go in there and just subtract a little bit there and over here I boosted that just a little bit and over here I, I brought that up a little bit and oh yeah, dude, you know, but... I do that to a synthesizer, and all of a sudden I've got the synthesizer patches that sound are pretty good, and I start doing that to it, it changes the whole sound of it. So most of the time, I'll, sometimes you can start out high on it, but a lot of times I'll go down real low on synthesizer patches and see if it's helping it, and then I'll start coming up. Is it helping it? Okay, I'll come up a little more. Is that helping it? No, no. Yep, no, it's not. I'm going back down to 20%. And then I think that sounds pretty good, but I think the bass end and the area needs to come up a little bit. Yeah. And then my higher end, I think I need to cut that off, bring that down, which doesn't seem right because I'm not equalizing as far as equal oddness contour dictates my ear here sound. But it actually sounds good because a lot of those things might have contributed to the sound sounding as good as it does because it's already taken that consideration. And those areas may already be subtracted or boosted or they aren't boosted where you think they should be subtracted or boosted and that's contributing to that unique sound that you have in a synthesizer patch and so you're fussing it up by applying the equal oddness contour to it and making a mess of it and this is only one stage of our equalization phases that we're going to go through starting in the next video talking about so those situations and the equal oddness contour take that into consideration just you understanding that you taking that in consideration is going to be steps forward in you becoming that next level master audio engineer because you will be begin dissecting that as far as your equal loudness contour work goes and you will be understanding that so it doesn't cause you confusion so you understand in different situations you might have to deal with that differently because just because your ear hears sounds and like the equal loudness contour dictates in some situations situations you don't want to fuss with it because you make a mess of it some situations it works great natural situations are great semi-natural situations like the guitar situation we talked about can be semi-great situations like samples can be problematic and synthesizer patches fussing with them with equal oddness contour can be a mess so you just think about it take the kind of steps and and, and the care as you start applying the equal loudness contour to take that in consideration that in itself will help make you that next level master audio engineer so peace soap love i hope you enjoyed this video talking about equal loudness contour and i will see you in the next video